So it broke during the Manchester United Burnley game that this is not Project Restart anymore. This is the Super League, not the European Super League, the Super League. Think of it as the global Super League because you can see where they'll go with this if they can. Um, we immediately um, we got the leaks first. Then we got Gary Neville going mental on TV. Um, very angry Gary Neville. Um, and look out for Neville and Carragher on Sky tonight from seven. I think that'll be worth worth watching if you want to see some passion. Um, then everything was revealed later in the evening in a very blanket, very bland statement from the clubs. They didn't even say, this is what we're doing. I read the Liverpool one from, from their website, and it just said, a group of leading European clubs. So very, very much, this is a group of people. This is not we as a club have decided to do this. So all very, um, had the effect of someone trying to dump their partner by text, if you know what I mean. Very sort of, right, we've decided we're going to do this. We're going to stick it out at nine on a Sunday night with a little leak in the afternoon. And we are ready for the carnage that comes afterwards. And boy, has there been carnage, obviously led by Gary Neville. But I'm sure we can all make up our own minds. Now, obviously, I'm not one for big outrage and, you know, rant, rant, yell, yell, hyperbole, all of this good stuff. But this is a really big deal. Really, really big deal. That's why when I'm doing the review show, I'm kind of saying, oh, well, uh, this red card and that handball doesn't feel important. <laughs> it really doesn't feel important today. Not even the firing of Jose Mourinho today, um, who's a huge name, feels important, does it? This feels like, I was thinking about this, like we had this beautiful game. Imagine you're out on the playground playing with your mates, right? And you're having a really great game. And then some of the older boys from school come over because they can see you've got a great game going on here and they want to come and get involved. And you're like, yeah, yeah, come and get involved. We want you to join in. And they take your game, completely change it. And now they're going to get lost, frankly, and leave it a little bit in tatters afterwards. That's kind of how I think a lot of us have been feeling about this. So let's look exactly at what the proposals are. Put your comments in. I will get to them, I promise. So this is the statement that came out. 12 of Europe's leading football clubs have today come together to announce they have agreed to establish a midweek competition, the Super League, governed by its founding clubs. I mean, you could honestly do five minutes on the first paragraph, couldn't you? I'll try not to, but look at the language. We have agreed, past tense, it's done, governed by its founding clubs. So if you take those two things at face value, this is done. They've agreed that they're going to do it. And presumably, if they've agreed that they're going to do it, they are ready for A, the backlash, and B, the legal challenge. And if they've gone this far, presumably, they do not care about the backlash that's about to come to them uh, from fans, clubs, hopefully um, things like the FA and the EFL and the Premier League, if they've got any power left. And then hopefully the government and we'll see if um, if they can get involved. But um, so Milan, Arsenal, Atletico, Chelsea, Barca, Inter, Juve, Liverpool, Man City, Man United, Real Madrid, Spurs have all joined as founding clubs. Now, I know a lot of people have been outraged at who the clubs is and who the clubs is, who the clubs are. This is not biggest and best. This is just biggest. And I'm seeing a lot of things. Oh, they're not in the Champions League. They've never won this. Doesn't matter, does it? It's who's in the right place at the right time. And for like a Tottenham, well, they've just set up the infrastructure to be one of the biggest clubs in the world. OK, they're not doing it on the pitch, but and Mr. Levy is presumably at the table um, for all of these discussions. So... That's what they've decided, their little club. Um, six of them going forward. The founding clubs will look forward to holding discussions with UEFA and FIFA. Good luck with that. Um, in a partnership to deliver the best outcomes for the new league and football as a whole. 
Wow. I mean, that's just a barefaced lie, isn't it? I mean, OK, maybe there is some truth in the fact that they want the best for football after they've taken all the biggest clubs out of it and, um, you know, ring fence their little club. OK, maybe there's some sense in that. But bigger picture, this is not best for football. This is best for these 12 clubs or whatever. Um, formation of a Super League comes at a time when the global pandemic has accelerated the instability in the existing field. It's so disingenuous, isn't it? Oh, well, the pandemic's made things worse. So we're really, help we're, we're really helping here. And it's like, oh, my God. You really think we can't see through that? It's uh, dear. Uh, the pandemic has shown a strategic vision, sustainable, blah, 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 European football pyramid, blah, blah, blah. A pyramid, a pyramid where the top bit is just got a little glass ceiling there where nobody else can get up at it. Is that the type of pyramid we're talking about here? Uh, right. Here's the format. 20 participating clubs with 15 founding clubs. So there you go. Three quarters of these teams will be in this Super League every single season. Um, and it's called the Super League. It's not called the European Super League. I suspect that that 15 um, will happily elect other clubs, maybe from Asia, maybe from Australasia, maybe from the United States, India. Um, it's not called the European Super League. Um there's plenty of room for expansion if they want to make this global TV show that they seem to want to. Um, Midweek fixtures with all participating clubs continuing to compete in their respective national leagues, preserving the traditional domestic match calendar, which remains at the heart of the club game. Oh, dear. Deary me. So basically, you're going to have this Premier League game on a Saturday, which um, one of these teams will play in. But it doesn't really matter. It doesn't really matter whether they win or not because all of the money and all of the TV audience, they hope, is going to be in the Wednesday night game. And then, you know, they play whoever on the Wednesday night um, in this Super League competition. Oh, dear. Someone told me in the NFL where there's no relegation that teams towards the end of the season will, quote, deliberately lose because they then get a higher draft pick next season. So that's what a no relegation system does. You know, you have teams who, oh, well, we can get the best quarterback if we're rubbish for the end of this season. Well, you've just taken the um, the kind of intensity out of the Premier League there if you're still going to qualify anyway for those six teams and maybe for the rest of the teams anyway. An August start. Clubs participating in two groups of 10. Sounds a bit like the Champions League, doesn't it? Uh, playing home and away fixtures, blah, blah, blah. Two-leg knockout format. A final in May, which will be saved, uh, staged as a single fixture at a neutral venue. Sound like the Super Bowl? Um, anybody? A little bit? Oh, dear. As soon as it's practicable after the start. Oh, yeah. So a little bit of virtue signal in there. Well, we'll set one up for the ladies as well. You know, that makes us that makes us good people, doesn't it? Uh, founding clubs will receive an amount of 3.5 billion solely to support their infrastructure. Um, and again, they mentioned COVID. So basically, this plan means that the quote biggest, and when we're talking about biggest, we're talking about two things really. We're talking about turnover and worldwide fan base. I'm not talking about trophies or anything of that nature. You're talking about turnover, worldwide fan base. And if this club does something, how many people will buy it, basically? Um, so the biggest, not the best, the biggest teams currently, not historically, currently in the country will go into this competition. And we already knew about the power of the Champions League, where you would have teams towards the end of the season rest players in the FA Cup because they wanted to finish fourth in the Premier League to get into the Champions League. So the Champions League already more powerful than everything else other than the actual Premier League title. Although, remember this whole um, paradigm with Arsenal 
where it was, well, as long as we're in the Champions League every season, this is OK. That was the thing. Can you get in there and qualify? That was the big motivator in English football. I'm going to take that away because you can't qualify. They're talking about a qualifying mechanism. I don't know how that's going to work, but five teams. I don't know how many countries are involved in this. Five teams across the entirety of Europe or just the countries that are involved? Oh, dear. So that's the plan. And let's be honest, that would kill competitive balance in the Premier League. Um, if the Premier League is not competitive, then the doomsday scenario is, is that the rights holders um, would not want their involvement. So then you would get the crash in the Premier League in the boom and bust theory, it's been booming for a long time. You then get the crash that a lot of people have been forecasting for a long time, which would not hit the Premier League first. You know it's going to hit below the Premier League and all of our teams as well. Floor would drop out of the um, drop out of the game, and it would have an awful, awful effect. Um, a lot of people are coming up with. A lot of um, very, you know, well, kick them out, get rid of them. Um, I genuinely don't know where, whether or not we're at a point whether they would be bothered, these clubs, by being kicked out. Or, excuse me, sorry, I don't want to disrespect the fans of these clubs, or the players, actually, um, whether those owners would be bothered. Because if going forward, we're going to have what they want, which is presumably a worldwide TV event each midweek that's bigger than the Premier League and bigger than the Champions League, um, would they really feel they were missing out if we just lost Manchester United, the great Manchester United, Matt Busby, Alex Ferguson, Eric Cantona? We, we, we just lose them then. They're in a different league. English football doesn't have them in anymore. Arsenal, Herbert Chapman, goodness me, Charlie George in the 70s, George Graham, Arsene Wenger, Dennis Bergkamp, Thierry Henry, gone. Tottenham, double winners, Blanche Flower, Gascoigne, Waddle, Hoddle, gone. Deary me, Liverpool, Liverpool, won everything for about 15 years in the 70s and 80s. Sunes, Dalglish, Hansen, Shankly, Paisley, Fagan, and then even recently Klopp, Benitez, Champions League, Gerrard, Liverpool, 19, 20 times champions, whatever it is, oh dear. Uh, I just wonder whether they'd want that, whether they'd be happy with that, the owners, that is. Um you know, and they're done with English football. And where that would leave English football, I've got no idea. Now, everybody is up in arms, really, really wanting to stop this. Um, I just hope we don't have a situation where these massively powerful billionaires just don't care. And they're not bothered if they get kicked out. They're not bothered if the government are going to try and come at them. They'll just restart Phoenix clubs. Do you know what I mean? And it will be you know, the Manchester Red Devils or whatever, which is kind of Manchester United and then flying all the um, all the players. The question is, if this is allowed to happen, I bet, and it will be Saudi Arabia or something like this, someone will come up and pay billions for the TV rights. Someone will pay it because they won't want anyone else having it. The question is then, will the players go? Will the players then go across when they're offered 20 million quid a year salary or whatever ludicrousness it is? And then will the fans watch it if it happens? And how many of us will be sat here left watching Ipswich Town, who are a great club, a small club, who had a great manager, two great managers and a couple of great periods of success, but they're not Manchester United or Liverpool. They're a small club. I was born in Ipswich. I support Ipswich. I had a season ticket there. I met my friends there. I didn't tune in on pay-per-view on a Saturday night along with 20 million other viewers. No, I went there with my dad 
when I was six because he took me to watch football. And it then became part of the community and part of my life as I grew up, not some TV event or what have you. That was that was what football was to me. And I think that's what football is to a lot of people. Are there enough people out of the eight billion of us on the planet who will sit down every midweek and watch this Super League? I don't need to watch it. Look, proof's in the pudding. I don't cover any of these teams on my channel. I cover 30 teams. Um, okay, Leeds and Villa are my dearly departed. You could say are big clubs. But they're not Manchester United, Liverpool, last, and they're not there at the moment, are they? Deary me. So, potentially seismic, disastrous, massively uh, landscape-altering stuff if these guys really do want to see this through and see this out. And if these incredibly rich, powerful people who don't like being told no and are used to being able to write a check that ensures that they get their own way, if they're ready for this fight, then maybe it could happen. I don't know. That's my that's my take. Let's go to the comments and see what you guys are saying. We'll not be watching. There's enough interest in Asia alone to keep those viewing figures up. That's the thing, isn't it? If even if even if all of us Ipswich fans and Bournemouth and Barnsley and QPR and Lincoln and Oxford, even all, even if all of us don't watch, like Mr. E says, what if there's, and this is no disrespect to the Asian TV audience, if they want to watch, they're going to watch. Deary me. Um, super chat, Archie, I weep for football as fans. We should do all we can to stop this. I hope it's enough. Even if it doesn't happen, this shouldn't ever be forgotten. Uh, Chris, it won't happen, but if it did, it lacks wide appeal because six English clubs and no German French clubs would be in direct competition. Plus bans for competing players. I hope you're right, Chris. I hope you're right. But, and again, I'm not really against the players here. These players are um, hyper-talented, hyper-ambitious individuals who are going to be offered, if this goes ahead, more money than God to go and play in it, aren't they? And you know what the domino effect's like. And I'm not just singling out Saudi Arabian money or Asian money or US money. Someone's going to buy this. Someone's going to buy this to put on TV for sure. And that then starts the ball rolling. Deary me. Uh, ruining any culture is always seen as a bad thing. Should be known. Uh, should be no different here. I won't watch it. I'm glad I'm a Norwich fan. At least we have family values. Uh, fans have got to stick together and not buy into it. Uh, Fear some owners of championship clubs will pull the plug. Incentives gone. Well, if if the money goes to this and out of the Premier League, then of course, yeah. But then isn't that half the problem in the first place, Mr. E? That the incentive of 90% of club owners is, can I get into the Premier League and start getting that 100 quid uh, TV money? Um, the knock-on effect of the championship could be just cataclysmic, couldn't it? Because if... If this um, takes money out of the Premier League, then the Premier League is potentially viable for collapse. And then the Championship is already on the verge there, where you've got a lot of teams risking everything on the promise of getting up to the Premier League. So I don't know. There's going to be a few very scared owners at the moment with a view to what you guys um, was saying there, well, what's the trickle-down effect? Is is there going to be a bust? Is there going to be a crash if, you know, uh, and I'm talking about a crash of the EFL or the Premier League. The idea of the Premier League, you know, this monster of a sort of entity not having the power and the biggest clubs just pulling themselves out of it and going elsewhere is frightening, isn't it? Because... We always thought, especially as championship fans, 
And that's made me laugh a few times when they're talking about a financially doped uh, division by um, an entity that isn't even, you know, linked. Well, come and watch the championship where one of the biggest factors is that money paid in by the Premier League to three teams every season. Um, we we kind of know how that how that sort of works. And I suppose they already have that in the Premier League with those Champions League te teams earning way more than all of the others uh, put together. Um, what else are you guys saying? The Premier League could become Division 2 if this goes through. It just... Um, I don't think there's a situation where the Premier League operates below it. I think... I think it will. If it happens, it will be a separate thing, and you're either in it or you're not. I think they had this. They might have had this with the cricket. They've had it with darts, haven't they? We have two different um, federations or entities or whatever. But football has always, I suppose, that's the strength for it. Has always come under, come under the one. But it could be disastrous, couldn't it? If we do have different entities, everyone. Um, wants it to all be as one, doesn't it? Sky Sports have spoke to an unnamed board member. Uh, they're not scared of having uh, leaving the Premier League, nor is legacy fans their first concern revenue is. Well, I would love that board member to name and shame the people that said that. And I know why he can't, but I would, I would love that board member to do that. Trouble is armchair fans want entertainment, not bothered about sport. And that's the big fear, Sophie, isn't it? that around the world, the 8 billion people, there's way more armchair fans than uh, people like me who are going to drive around England going to 100 games a season watching loads of different teams. You know, there is more. Uh, ripping the heart and soul out of the game are the only positive for Watford fans. If we go up, we go straight to the top six. Well, there we go. Uh, armchair fans need to realise it's much less likely your heroes are going to look as good when only playing elite competition. Look, it's going to run and run, isn't it? I've had a sicky feeling um, in my stomach about this all day. I'm just going to read that. Yeah, no German club. So this is where we could get Utopia, where the German model of 51% uh, uh, fan ownership, I think, or private ownership cannot I know then the kind of Red Bull people kind of found a way around that, didn't they, so to speak? But, yeah, no German clubs are going to be involved so far. But, again, it's can can you buy somebody's soul? Can you buy Bayern Munich's soul? And Gerd Muller, Lothar Matthias, Jürgen Klinsmann. Deary me. Um, yeah, what, can they be brought in afterwards? And will this then lead to more legislation in our game to go some way towards, you know, being able to stop this happening? Uh, will public opinion could swing us totally against the greedy owners? Time now is right for proper regulatory to be in, um, implemented by the government. Give owners some accountability. Yeah, just depends how how tough they want to go against this, isn't it? And you know, whatever you whatever you put, they'll just start new organisations outside of it. But yes, I mean, we've been saying for ages on the channel, we need the wealth redistributed um, and the pyramid kind of reset to get more of a competitive balance than there is currently. But will that just be an opportunity uh, for them to close the shop rather than even out the pyramid? Oh, dear. Oh, dear. Hey, uh, did my master's on... Professional league structures, when profit is the main focus, there is no better league type than a close... Exactly. Yeah. Totally agree, James. Yeah. That's that's the scenario that brings in the 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 biggest bucks, doesn't it? Uh, uh, it's bye-bye to the six. Premier League will become more open and more interesting. And similarly, the um, Championship League 1 and 2, Sky BT, don't get TV rights. They will uh, big up the Premier League UEFA for competitions. It's what fans want. And surely it's a chance now to let's get all of this as one as one entity. Let's stop Premier League and EFL. Got to merge it, haven't they? There's so many problems with having the two separate um, entity. 
works well in American sport, doesn't work well in our football. And the reason is, James, our football developed over 100 years. It wasn't just this brainchild. Um, the American model, and I don't want this to become an anti-American thing or whatever, but, you know, it's... Um, it's, I don't know the exact history of it, but it's certainly something that they had centralised control over rather than clubs voting and things of that nature for a lot longer than we've had. Uh, feel sorry for managers doing press conferences. I mean, we can't blame the managers, Liam, if they do say no comment. Well, what, what can they do? You know, it's, they're, they're beholden to their bosses, aren't they? So, um, oh dear. It's very, very depressing, aren't we? Very, very depressing. Um, look, guys, I've rambled on about that. Loads of good comments. Just really, really quickly, and I'm not doing this as A, a witch hunt, or B, to try and pull out people and have a go at them. Just quickly, as a as a test, can someone say something positive about this? We're, we're not going not gonna to jump at you. I'm just purely curious. Does anyone like this idea? Does anyone think this idea would be, um, you know, good? Good for football generally. Um, can anyone pull out anything positive? I'm not, I'm not, um, you know, signaling a witch hunt. Everyone is entitled to their view, but I've just never seen um, the, you know, the kind of reaction so just 100%. This is not what we want, you know. Um, anyone, anything positive? I've got 175 people. Um, in here, hell no, no. Um, it would make it could make the Premier League more competitive. Yeah, it's kind of what's left. Um, the only slight, yeah, and James agrees there. Positives, get rid of the money grabbers, possibly, yeah. But generally, unless you're looking at the bottom line and you want this vast midweek, worldwide, global hyper mega league. Um, I don't see anything good. Change is inevitable. As long as those clubs out of the system, they will be more competitive. Obviously, bad for genuine groups of fans. Um, a great idea if promoted. Fine. I think that's the big thing, isn't it? If you can get into it, but it's the closed door that everyone's really, really hating. Uh, redistribution of the... So basically, guys, the positives you, you're coming up with are purely down to the fact that this would be an absolute watershed and we could jump on that to get a reset and move problems out of the current system. That seems to be, uh, without putting words in um, anybody's, anybody's mouth, that you would take advantage to try and iron out some current kinks that we've got. So, oh dear. Right. I'm going to stop on that. Thoroughly depressing. The game we all love, the system we all love, and everybody watching my channel, I know because we don't cover the big teams, supports in the main small clubs, don't they? And um, that dream, that dream, one good season in the championship, and you're into the Premier League, the granddaddy, the biggest stage of all. But the glass ceiling now at the top of that is thoroughly, thoroughly depressing.